I wanted to ask you, uh, since a couple of weeks ago you lost against Lavia and US Open, uh, how did you approach differently the game to beat the big time? Um, I think for the game plan, I approached it the same way. I thought it was working. Um, at the US Open, I was serving for the third set to lead to get uh, two sets to one. And there happened a little bit the same as when I could serve for, for the match today. Uh, somewhere I wasn't serving my best. He was aggressive, doing the right things. And after that break, I think here I lost a little bit uh, my, uh, my structure in my game, especially in that tie break. Um, but this time, I think the biggest difference is that I stayed calm. I stayed positive. Um, I was ready to, to battle from the first point in the third set, even though he started really well in that third set. Um, so uh, while at the US Open, I, I, I cracked a little bit for it, even though it's two games, you know, uh, going to that fourth set, two games where you straight away breaks me, and it's hard to come back in that in that match. But here, you know, that's learning from the past. That's want to do better. Uh, that's what happened to me. Now Belgium has a great chance because if you win the doubles, you are already qualified. And uh, did you expect something like that? Because you, you, before your colleague Ran came and said that, that uh, he thought you were outsiders. I think you're right, we are the outsiders, but that's completely fine. You know, uh, somewhere the pressure is a little bit off when you're the outsiders, nobody really expects you to. to go further we see opportunities we want to win uh, I'm playing great tennis I'm winning my matches I'm giving the doubles guys uh, twice in a row now an opportunity to, to win the tie they did amazingly against the Netherlands if they can do the same great if not we will have to battle again tomorrow we have another chance tomorrow so you know at that part the pressure is, is not 100% on as maybe other countries and uh, if you expect it uh, I'm I don't think so, but I was I was ready to win my singles matches, and I knew every doubles match the guys were going to play is a 50-50 match. So uh, you know this is going to be a 50 match again. So let's see where where it's end up. But I'm just very happy and, and proud of ourselves to be in this position. And once again, if we don't finish it today, we have another chance tomorrow. If uh, uh, Belgium will qualify, uh, will you lead the celebration with the Paris that this? Celebration like you did in Roland Garros? To be honest, I'm not sure uh, how hard I, I can celebrate. For some reason, there is like mixed emotions in me. Maybe because mentally I really had to push hard today. Uh, but let's see. I, I tried to zoom a little bit out of that match today because I really need my rest. I need to be there tomorrow for the team as well. So uh, I'm not sure what's going to happen today. I heard maybe tomorrow. You know, even if we win, we need still need to win matches to be seated in, in Malaga or something. So uh, let's see how it goes. We will go with the flow, whatever we feel like. But I think the, the most important is now to win that doubles match. Other question? Yeah. Uh, Belgium has won the first match. I would like to know if you had uh, some memories uh, about that, which I would ask, for example, if you go to see it live, especially in Zenka, I think, nine, nine years ago, or even uh, in Lille, or you already knew the most, uh, the best uh, Belgian players, like uh, David, uh, or obviously Jacques. Yeah, I'll, I'll, at the time, in, uh, in the first one with uh, Ghent and the previous, I got one time the chance to play with them, and it was probably the best day uh, of my young uh, tennis life that I got to hit with all the players from the Davis Cup. Um, just in general, you know, they played a lot of ties in Belgium, so we could go often out. We, I would go even if it was in the, in Germany or whatever. Whenever there was a chance, I would go. Uh, I saw the finals in Ghent. Uh, two days I was there um, in Lille. I couldn't go, but at the time I was working with the captain, Juan Bonetti. So it's always been close to me, and that just in general, the love for Davis Cup. I, will, I always said it, even though I was a junior, this is something I really want. I prefer to shine in Davis Cup than uh, win the Master Thousands in China or something. It's just, 
a little bit in our nature to play for a country um, and, and to live all these moments together. One last question, please. Uh, something about your history, if you like, once more uh, explain why you are called uh, Azizu and uh, to help uh, Burundi is the use of um, at that part, I've been named uh, to Zinedine Zidane. Um, yeah, I don't know, but my mom was pregnant and for some reason she really thought I was going to be a girl. And she never did any scans of it, so uh, she had a name for me, which was going to be Amelia. Or Amelie, Amelie. And then uh, it turned out to be a boy, so when I came out, I didn't have a name. And my dad played uh, amateur uh, football. And there, everybody in the team had a nickname. It was like yeah, Maradona, Pele, uh, and he was called Sisu. And then, for some reason, he wanted to call me Sisu. And yeah, it's not that easy at, when you're at school, when you're young, and you're called Sisu, because nobody's called Sisu. And at times, they would laugh at it. But now, I'm really happy actually that I have that name because it's quite special. And uh, if you go into in France or whatever, they're always a little bit extra nice to you just because.